Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we are back at this Hashizagi ice machine that we just installed that came with no refrigerant in it. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In my previous video we installed this unit, turned it on, went into error. We found out that there was no refrigerant in it and we found a leak at the compressor connection. It was a poor connection that came from the factory and I'll show you guys a picture. All right guys, got the top cover off. Might be a little bit easier to access it in there even though it would be hard with these pipes in the way you see. I gotta put my arm all the way in here. The leak is right here. Literally got a hole for a pipe connection. We're going to braze with running nitrogen through the system. Right here we have this regulator on top of our regulator. We're going to run that through our system through the high side. We're going to pull the Schrader valve off here so we can run the nitro through while we braze so we don't have any carbon buildup. And let's get this started. We've got the Schrader valve out. Anytime you open up a system, it's been exposed to moisture. You're going to want to change the filter dryer. The only thing is, is this is not quarter inch, nor is it three eighths. Like it's like a size in between. I don't know what it's like five sixteenths or something like that. And I just can't get a filter dryer like that. So today we're going to bypass that. It is what it is. So right now we got the high side connected. The side is open. Of course, we're going to be using our B tank to braze. Let's open up this side. Put up the high side. And then we're gonna regulate this. You see, watch the little orange bowl. Right, come on. Give us a little something. Right there. I'm just gonna adjust that. So it's within that braze, the three to five SCFH. See how it's floating? Right there. So that's pretty much what we're gonna want to run through the system. And make sure we, feel, we hear that coming out through here while we braze. We're sanding down a little area. Before taking out the pin, I sanded down this area right here. So we're gonna get a nice clean connection. Right now we do have the nitro flowing through. I can hear it when I hold it down. It's a very, very small amount, but we're good to go. Let's light up. All right, smoke alarms are off. I don't have my striker with me, sue me. it close our manifold I let it purge out a little bit through there can close nitrogen tank close this and we're gonna take out this little regulator I believe I got it already and we're gonna connect it like this once that pipe cools off, we're gonna put the Schrader valve back in place, pressurize, and test for leaks. It's clearing the line a bit. Let that cool off. Put that Schrader valve back, everything cooled off. Nitrogen helped cool it off and push out any obstructions. At this point, I don't trust Hachizaki for anything. This is our fireproof mat. Everything's nice and safe. Let's go ahead and charge our system with nitrogen. Do I hear anything else leaking? No. Last time I heard the leak, which was crazy. I hear a little bit of sound now, but that's just the system pressurizing right now. Let's go ahead and get that pressure up. 
and check for leaks. Got the system pressurized just above 300 pounds per square inch and we're gonna use Cal Blue micro gas leak detector. Let's just spray that joint. I don't hear no whistling sounds anymore. Leave that on there, see if anything comes up, but that connection's looking good. It's, it, I didn't go around the whole fitting, I just did in the small area right there. I don't want to build up too many problems in here, so let's give it a few minutes. Then we're gonna release a nitrogen charge and pull a vacuum. I did connect a digital vacuum gauge. All right, everything's looking good. Let's close this tank. And blow this charge. We got both our high and low side connected, gauges, yellow hose to the pump. Let's turn this thing on. There we go. Turn down our vacuum gauge, micron gauge. And let's see what happens. I don't like the sound of this thing right now. We got oil. Right there, we're already coming down. 9,000 microns. It's good when it starts showing a number. We reached some level of vacuum. All right, 8,000. Let's open up this side too. Realize that's not open. That's gonna pull down a lot faster now. 7,500, 7,000. Let's see what happens. Let's give it some time. All right, guys, we're getting a reading of 793, 94 microns. It's been in a vacuum for over an hour. Honestly, I would like to see it lower. I don't know if this thing is acting up or there could be some moisture in that in that dryer but anyways let's close our valves close our manifold let's see if this thing holds all right it's been about 20 minutes or so and looks like we're evened out at about 1500 microns if you look on the bottom it says it's in the negative so it's not going up so it might go up and down but it's i i seen it stay at, at zero and then in the negative so that's okay to me Sometimes it might jump up and down like we see now, but it looks like it's holding. I want to give this thing a shot and charge it up with the refrigerant that is labeled here. It's a critical charge, so I'm probably only going to have one hose on the system. I'm only going to charge through the processing tube. And let's see, it's refrigerant 404A, one pound, and then 10.5 ounces. All right, we got a refrigerant 404A. Okay, just connected only on one hose, low pressure side, processing tube. We're gonna zero out our scale. We got this thing on a scale, it's a critical charge. And we're gonna need to put in one pound and then 10.5 ounces. So that's gonna be 16 ounces in a pound. So 16 plus 10, so 36.5 ounces. I already purged, tank is open. Let's charge it up. All right, it's slowly climbing up. 16 plus 10.5 is 26 and a half ounces, so excuse that. When we get close over there. Also, when we take off the gauges, we lose a little bit of gas. So I might add just a little bit more. Just like a quick shot, like, boom. Anyways, let's get that in there. Let's start this up again. 26.25, I just saw that 26.5. Give it a quick shot. Come on. 26.25. 
26.5 ounces refrigerant 404A. Alright, let's see what happens. System is in the off position. Switch it to ice. It says on. I heard a click. Let's see what happens. It's a beautiful looking new unit. Just hope there's no issues. Any minute now. Thing is, this compressor ran for 45 minutes before I went into alarm. Had zero refrigerant in it. Compressor started, you can hear it. So there's no low pressure controls in these units, which is, I think, ridiculous. Anyways. Plate is coming down now. Solenoid open. The water. Want this thing to get hot. Supposed to defrost. We'll see. Oh, I feel it's super cold right now. Wasn't doing that before. Why? Because there's no refrigerant in it. Condenser fan motor is running. System is on on. Let's check the time and set a timer. It's 1.32. Let's see how long it takes for this thing to drop ice. Plate is back up. Pipe is cold. This thing is gonna get frosty. From my experience, it always gets frosty before it drops ice. So, let's see what happens. All right, it's 1.53, it's been 21 minutes. Condenser fan just stopped, compressor is on. Oh, this pipe is nice and hot now. It's probably gonna drop some ice right now. All right, we got ice there. Come on, show me the money, show me the money. Let's see if it drops. Slowly, slowly starting to melt, I see a little bit. Oh coming down come on show me the money and there's the money we need 26.5 ounces but I, I got right now 27.25 ounces just because when you take off this hose it was a quick little amount so we're just we're just about there so now gauges are off the system. We're gonna let this run. Let's watch it drop another batch of ice. I got my electronic leak detector here for refrigerant, but I'm just having an issue. Might need a battery swap out, but I would love to just run this through with refrigerant in the system, but fortunately, something's up with this thing. I don't know if it's the batteries or what, but I don't have batteries. Anyways, we did the right thing. We did leak check. I just always like to end off with this. Especially with an ice machine when I have time. But anyways, let's, let's, let's let this thing drop another batch of ice. All right, so we dropped our second batch of ice. I didn't get it on camera because management was watching. These big blocks is ice that they ordered so they can keep the unit with ice. But anyways, this is the ice that we produced, these cubes, which is pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour some hot water in here, melt off the ice that we produce just like as a cautionary thing you know you buy a new shirt you might want to put it through the wash first before you start especially with this before people start drinking it or anything <laughs> so anyways let's uh we're gonna pick these big cubes out melt the rest and we're gonna but we're gonna wrap it up from here i think we're gonna do that okay also i put in caps refrigerant board caps that actually have gaskets in them I don't like these because there's no gasket in them and considering they were the leak before, you know, it's a little bit of a courtesy. But anyways, we're gonna wrap it up from here. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. I'll catch you all next time.